Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Uh, I've been busy preparing the shop for the new Torchmate uh, CNC plasma machine. So that's, uh, stay tuned for some more videos on that soon to come. Uh, but in the meantime, I've been wanting to do a video for some time on how to powder coat in the home shop. Powder coating is a great uh, way to both protect and add color to your metal parts. And it's by far, I think, the best, most practical, efficient, cheapest, etc. way um, to get that done in the home shop. You're looking at a part here that was just a sample part that was a, uh, black powder coated. So we are going to show you today how to uh, select the powders and how to so for some tips and tricks as we go through the process. First off, let's talk uh, powder coating equipment and accessories. Um, the key to good looking parts and professional looking powder coating job is a clean part. I use, uh, and in fact you'll see most of my stuff happens to be from Eastwood. Um, I like it, I've been happy with it, and that's just how it's been for me. Um, I use the Eastwood pre prepping solution which is sort of a degreaser um, it helps clean the part it needs to be cleaned removed free of oils and dry dry from any residue including the pre itself um, you also want to wash your hands so that you're not applying fresh uh, skin oil or hand oil to the parts as you're handling them um, I'll show you the gun and the powder coating setup itself when we're in the garage um, next I just wanted to show you some paints that I've got um, this is a satin black finished part and the powder form of that paint looks like this so you can get a feel for the difference between what it looks like in the powder form versus after it's on. Um, some other colors I've got just for kicks are a, uh, a great red, let's see here what's this one, uh, hot coat um, powder bright red, it's a great color. Uh, this is an OD green, this one happens to dry uh, a little darker than it looks here and a mirror blue. Um, so the beauty of powder coating is it's pretty quick and cheap to swap between color powders which gives you great flexibility uh, to uh, match the color you want. Um, East Coat, I bought a kit from East Coat, uh, Eastwood, sorry, off eBay actually. I think it was about a hundred bucks and it included the gun and um, some accessory paints and it also included this uh, color chart which is great because it gives you a more accurate sample of what some of their paint options are they sell more than this but it's a good uh, it's a good uh, starting place just for example that mirror blue that we just looked at is that chip right there and the bright red is that chip right there the cleaning process is pretty straightforward um, I like using these shop rags over paper towels paper towels are fibrous and they tend to leave little uh, shreds of paper on the part which can be uh, should be annoying and they can mar your finish so these shop rags are great put a little bit of palm pre on the rag and then you just wipe it down these are fresh off the mill um, they're deburred as part of the milling op which I like doing versus using a hand tool or, or tumbling them um, and like I said no science to this you're just trying to get um, the worst of it off if you do use a vibratory tumbler or some other um, process that leaves a lot of re residual res residue on the part you'll have to spend more time uh, cleaning it like I said the cleaner the part the better it's going to look and then lastly I do use a q-tip I uh, wish I didn't have to but um, because the q-tips can also leave little fiber strands in the part but in this particular example I'll use the q-tip and I'll run it inside of here and then I'll run it inside of here just to get everything off and then I'll flip over, dry side, dry off the worst of it. Um, and then what I do to help uh, avoid getting any of those fibers um, on the part when I'm painting it is I'll shoot, spray these real quick with the air compressor blast to uh, sort of blow them off. You also want to let them dry from the Palm Pre before you uh, paint them right away. I've got two parts here. Um, I happen to paint a lot of, a lot of parts that have quarter by 24, excuse me, 10 by 24 tapped holes in them. So I use these little aluminum blocks with the threads on them. Um, it, you know, it may not be the best way, but works for me. Um, I like it too because it provides a connecting point for the uh, powder coat gun, which you'll see here in a minute. Um, I'll show you when we're closer to the toaster oven though that there are quite a few ways to uh, fix your things, whether you're concerned with quantity or uh, quality of ensuring the powder coat uh, finish gets everywhere. Um, but you do need to make sure in these parts, for instance, I have to re 
uh, sand off the powder coat here so that I continue to have a uh, surface which will connect, connect which will offer uh, connectivity for the positive uh, or for the negative um, charge on the powder coat gun. So as I mentioned, I like to give these a quick shot of air. That helps me so there's no debris left over, especially from, uh, from the Q-tips or uh, from paper towels. Okay, so what other equipment do you need? You're looking here at the hot coat uh, gun from Eastwood that I mentioned I purchased on eBay. Um, I think it was on eBay through Eastwood's eBay account though. Um, it's a great gun, I've had a lot of uh, success with it. It requires a, an independent air compressor as you can see that big blue monster there. Uh, that happens to be a new air compressor. You absolutely do not need that one big. And in fact, you know, the smallest size pancake compressor from Home Depot would work fine. The one caveat is you absolutely need good quality air and uh, one of the biggest culprits to bad air is a compressor that's too small which then means it has to run too hard and it gets too hot. When an air compressor gets hot it compresses the air and creates moisture due to the hot due to the heat of the air um, and that moisture will really really ruin a powder coat job so um, if you don't if you have a small compressor make sure you're not overrunning it make sure you drain the tank and last but not least I purchased the um, black filter here, which is a uh, disposable incandescent moisture filter as sort of a last uh, as a last safeguard before the air hits the powder coat gun. Um, the last thing you need is a toaster oven. You can see there in the end. I bought that about five years ago for, for 30 bucks, and uh, it's done quite a few hundred parts. So the um, only thing you need to do is go to 400 degrees. Before I switch my air hose over to the powder coat gun, I test the PSI. You don't need much. I think they say five to 10. Um, I do it more based on feel. So you can see here when it's about uh, an inch or two away from my hand, it's, you know, it's barely indenting it. Um, and that's plenty good for me. You don't want to turn this uh, hose on to the powder coat gun if you've got 80 or 90 PSI coming out of it. So let's powder coat this. Uh, the way powder coating works is it uh, you connect a lead, which I believe is the negative lead or cathode, to the part, and then the parts, the powder um, coming out of the gun has a positive charge, which is created by the tip that you can see right there. And that magnetic attraction of the electrical particles is what makes powder coating apply itself to the part, and then you bake it to put it on firmly. So you press this button I've got here in my right hand, um, to start the 10, it's like 10,000 volts, so you don't want to get it close or it will, or it will arc on you. Um, press the button down, squeeze. You want to be careful, you can um, apply too much powder. If you have too high a pressure, um, if you're too close, if you stay in one area for too long on the part. Um, so you do want to be careful. It's not foolproof, but it's pretty easy to do. Um, it's a lot easier than uh, wet painting in terms of not being any runs. And worst case, if you don't like your uh, powder coat, before you bake it, you can just blow it off or wash it off in the sink and start over. So those look good. I'll take a closer look um, just to make sure I'm happy with them. They say you're supposed to preheat the oven so that when you put the part in, it um, hits that hot temperature right away. Um, I've never tested or experimented to see if that's true, but um, it's never been a hassle to preheat it. So let it get up to temp. Like I said, I put it at 400. Um, I also read it one time you're supposed to bake them for you know, 450 for five minutes and then 400 for 20 minutes. I did that for a while and then I started doing just 400 for 25 minutes and I've never noticed a difference. So, um, you know, feel free to experiment on your own. Um, at this point, obviously the inside of the toaster is hot, so you want to be careful. So I use a pair of pliers, pull this out. I use this aluminum block as a spacer. Drop your part on there. Slide it in. Make sure your timer is set correctly. And 25 minutes later, we'll come back and take a look. Okay, the part's just finished. I'm gonna open up the door. 
and just gently pull them out. I like to let them cool just like this. They'll cool a lot faster this way than if you leave them in the oven with the door closed. Um, I also don't think it's probably the best idea to try to take them out and put them in a cold place or blow a fan on them to accelerate the cooling. Um, they're just fine to air cool and it'll only take about 20 minutes. Um, some sort of final thoughts before we take a look at the parts when they cool. Um, you know, th this is so much better than wet paint or spray paint, um, but it does still smell a little. So, you know, I like doing it in the uh, garage here where I'm away from the rest of the family. Um, you also can't use a uh, toaster uh, that you use for food or an oven that you use for food. So don't do this in the, uh, the wife's uh, uh, food, uh, food and kitchen oven. Um, you'll notice I was actually a few seconds there early, but that's fine on the, on the timer. Um, like I said, let it cool by air. Um, I'll show you in a minute some different ways you can hold the parts in there. There's a lot more ways you can get creative with that um, if you don't like the way I'm doing it here. Um, I mentioned a lot of stuff from Eastwood. Um, there's another company I've heard a lot of great things about called Columbia Coatings. They sell a lot of different paints, so if you're interested in this, be sure to check out Columbia Coatings. And lastly, the, um, the setup that I was showing with the Eastwood hot part, or whatever it's called, hot uh, coat gun, um, you need a separate air compressor. Um, I have seen some guns before that uh, have built-in sort of fans or compressors, if you will. Um, I'm guessing those may not be quite as high quality, but at the same time, if you don't have an air compressor, um, it's sure worth a try. So feel free to check those out. Uh, I, I know uh, Haas uh, Machine uh, did a video on powder coating, and he's got one of those. I think it's by Sears in there. So be sure to check that if you're interested, and uh, we'll let these cool and take a look. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. These have cooled. Uh, they're not dead cold, but they're plenty cold to touch. And here they are. Um, these are plenty good for um, my purposes today, but I will tell you this is actually not um, the best powder coating job I can do or, or you can do. You can see in the corner there, there's a tiny amount of uh, you know, sort of a pitting, if you will. Um, and here's my, first of all, if you're having troubles, make sure your air quality is good, your air is dry, parts are clean. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Um, my biggest criticism of the powder coating job I just did here was you'll notice when I sprayed the parts, the paint adhered to the part very, very quickly. And uh, I was probably blowing a little bit too much paint, which usually is means you've got too much air pressure. It can also just mean, it can also change based on how full your powder hopper is and, and that type of thing. So if I had um, painted these more slowly, if you will, I think less paint would have gone on and it would have been an even finer job. But again, this is great and this is so rugged. Um, it's a really a high quality finish that um, looks very professional and no one would know you're doing these out of your garage. Okay, final thoughts. Um, I use the included rack with the toaster to support my parts. Um, if you're doing a lot of a certain style, you could even build your own similar dimension custom fixture that would slide in and out that held your parts. Um, the other thing I've seen a lot of people do, which is really a great idea, is to toasters include a um, removable floor in order to clean them. And so you can take that out, and what you would then do is you've got two um, s sort of slots right here, and you can use that to hang parts. Hanging parts is a very common way to powder coat them. Nothing wrong with it. I like doing it the way I do it for uh, certain reasons, but uh, that gives you much greater area or to do longer parts um, or to, to lift them in and out without disturbing them. Uh, you just want to be careful the first time you do this or probably every time you do this because you're using the toaster in an unconventional manner, you always want to be careful that it doesn't catch fire or cause any problems. So pay attention, be alert, know where your fire extinguisher is and do this away from anything else that's flammable. Uh, that's all for now, folks. Appreciate it. And again, stay tuned for uh, the Torchmate CNC Plasma, which should be coming uh, any day now.